I have no idea what's making that sound. Do they need more oil? I already oiled it. Yeah, that's what it feels like. It's coming right out of them, Himes. I just put the whole book, sprayed a whole bunch of that stuff in them. It may not got down in them. I wonder if I have to rotate it. Ouch! Whatever I do, I wonder if I have to rotate it. They look well lubricated. To me. Oh well, it could just be that. I will tell you, it never makes that noise whenever it's rolling. It only does it whenever it's in a fixed position like this. Okay. So that's probably what it is. And that was my opinion when I first heard it was, well, the problem is right here, it has no momentum. So it's probably just all that pressure downloaded straight to that steering rather when you're rolling. It takes half the load off of it because the tires are already moving and you can just steer it a certain direction. So. Okay, so this is Darren Harley with Wee TJ. What are we doing today? Transfer case, chain. Chain, so actually he was trying to diagnose a little noise coming out of his front steering. That's another time. Yep. Everything looks good under there. Uh, 06 Rubicon, 4 liter, of course. Uh, 6 speed manual. 4 to 1 transmission, from what we understand. Transfer case. Transfer case. Uh, from what we understand, um, these are somewhat notorious for the chains stretching. Mm -hmm. now, this is still in the 50,000, almost we're ready to go to into 60, but it's a low my mileage Jeep. Um, but it's got a growl when you get it up to speed. We'll say 30 and above. And it doesn't matter what gear you're in. Um, and when you let off, it relaxes, makes a totally different sound. So initially it was a little confusing because I was thinking it was possibly in the transmission or I was even thinking the rear end, but then we found out that it could be the transfer case, transfer case uh, chain. Sorry about that. So that's what we're doing. I ordered a transfer case chain and appears as though these things fit up to a 2014 or a 2016. I don't know it could it could have went all the way to the end of the jk rubicons it looks like this is uh, essentially the same transfer case mm -hmm. late um uh rubicon tj all the way into jk because it you, takes the same parts yeah you, it's it listed as the same transfer case too yeah it went from the year range was 03 to oh six you know 16 or 14 or whatever it was so they ran it for a while Now, surprisingly, not maybe not surprisingly, but I've worked a few times underneath his Jeep compared to mine. His is an inch and a half lower. A big difference. An inch and a half. I don't know if we would have done the transmission uh, replacement the way we just did without lifting this some. You're further off getting uh, getting the case really clean. And since we're only doing the chain, we don't think the bearings have to be done. I, if they got to be rebuilt already at not even 60,000 miles, uh, there's some problem with it, but. Well, I'm taking out the speed sensor here. I'm just making sure that this Torx bit fits down in there. <laughs> Good, because you definitely don't want to strip it. Actually, that's Harley. Uh, the speed sensor was tight. And so I'm gonna grab my hand impact. If you just don't know about this, um, you turn the direction in which you want it to go and you hit it and yeah, it they're incredibly useful for seat belts inside vehicles. Um, anytime you have a really stubborn thing that takes a Torx or okay. Phillips or what have you that you think you're going to strip okay. it out, grab your hand impact. And most time you get it out, yeah see so it's starting to come out but i'm going to tell him to run it back in work that bolt back and forth before he fully takes it back out yeah he switches it he's going to run it in so we get that speed sensor out so we can take the that the harmonic and that housing off well we needed a polar yeah and, and now we got one. since this wouldn't fit in there we went 
to Harbor Freight and bought a tool that I'm willing to modify. We had to cut them down to fit back in there. Yep, that's their evil. Oh, this could have. Will it break? Any day now. Okay. This dowel's going to need to be removed right here, so grab yourself a Ziploc bag to make sure you don't lose it. Okay. So that green tape is just frog tape. We, we put that on there to protect the bearing uh, because we figured it was good and in fact it was. We just wanted to make sure nothing got in there, no debris, anything. Huh? Yeah, so we'll put a little bit of lubricant i guess i should say on the inside of these threads that way it could be working on uh, taking some of the corrosion out of those threads while we were actually working on replacing the chain so that's what we're doing here i think that's pv blaster i'm not right, i can't so remember though got a couple, you got a couple ears here and we got a piece of hardwood we have two pry bars and he's just gonna he's got them slid all the way in he's just gonna do slow pressure I would I would come down to the strongest point down here. Yeah. Yeah, they they're probably gonna be pretty strong. Yeah, because they're there for that reason, right? It kind of looks like it. I should. There we go. Here we go. Do not separate the cases the way we did. Now we definitely pried them apart correctly and probably the best of anyone that I saw on YouTube. However, the way we have this case mounted is just an absolute <laughs> train wreck. Um, the fork right here, check your shoes, make sure you have the blue and the and the two nylon shoes, they're in good shape and your spring locations. But when you separate them the way we did, it's hard to know where this stuff all went. I'm gonna show an image up here shortly as to how you mount the case to separate them properly without everything going everywhere. Yeah, so learn from our mistakes and it go <laughs> separates much easier when done correctly. All right, here's that image I was talking about. So the reason why I know when you have the transfer case mounted this way and you disassemble it and reassemble it this way, it goes so much better is because we had to remove it due to how we had originally installed the fork. We just would put it together. We noticed right off that it wasn't shifting correctly. But either way, the mating surface to the transmission is going down towards the table. You can see that's the front, um, uh, the shaft going for the front drive shaft is facing uh, up. And this is so much easier because when you separate it, when you pry those two tabs apart, 
separate the front part of the transfer case. It slides off the front and everything stays in place. No falling springs, no falling fork, nothing. This is gonna be a two, per, two person thing here. All right, you wanna hold this over here. Get your hands clean. Pretty clean. Come over on this side. Yep. You can pull this out a little bit. Okay. Let me get this a little, out a little bit more. I'm probably gonna have to. Now, a lot of people will, you know, you're supposed to leave this gasket material setting for a few minutes before you put it together. Well, we're going to start putting it together immediately. And the reason is, it may take us a few minutes to just get the thing put together. Uh, let alone the gaskets actually touching each other. Yeah. Okay, so we had this thing all bolted together. Practically done. It wouldn't. Uh, it wouldn't. Un um, it wouldn't go into two-wheel drive. Uh, it stayed up locked. It did four low, neutral, four high. But wouldn't do uh, two-wheel drive. <laughs> we had these springs on the wrong side of the fork. Well, don't get all revved up if you have to <laughs> separate one of these cases again. Um, we've learned with transfer cases, uh, you know, especially if you don't do this every day, that grab yourself an extra tube of Permatex. Because when you're assembling it on the bench, you're either going to put your hand into it, you're gonna either have to re-permatex it. On the 231s, you're questioning where that oil pump pickup is. Uh, for example, on this 241 here, we put the springs in the wrong location. All of it was caught on the bench, but we've learned you have to re-permatex these things more than once. So I'm gonna go and lay this on its side. We're gonna tap this other end to get our dowel to show. There we go. That I just hit it with the other end with a rubber mallet. I'm gonna put my dowel in. This has that cavity there for it. And that's in. Okay, so if you were to buy a complete rebuild kit, well, it would come with new ones of these. But since we didn't, we'll be reusing ours. Put a little bit of Permatex at the front. The other thing is, this input shaft, not input, this uh, harmonic, black words of, uh, I don't know what these are called, but this gets torqued right here. That big nut, um, 190 to 230. And then the yoke right here gets 90 to 130. Almost 100 pounds difference. Now Harley's cleaning up. He's actually spraying the yoke. And then we'll have that on there. And we'll put this thing up in there. Just using 400 wet, uh, wet dry, wet sandpaper. All right. So did we fix the transfer case or no? Uh, yes and kind of no. We did fix the transfer case. It's a little bit quieter, but uh, this is where we stand right now. We just did a couple thousand mile trip with these Jeeps, made it back, but the sound did progressively get worse. So we made it a little bit quieter by changing the chain. But then it progressively got louder the original sound so take that so apparently we had a little sound coming out of the chain and then we had 
another sound coming out somewhere else and we believe that sounds coming out of an nsg 370 six speed transmission so right before the trip we started doing a whole lot of research on these transmissions and found out that some people say that these have marbles inside of them um if i can quote fifth gear uh oh no yeah high gear high gear out of memphis tennessee he said that these transmissions are over engineered Overcomplicated, the way I say it. And so we're going to try to rebuild it, even though they have advised me not to do it. They told me that these are way too complicated of a transmission for the average person to do it. But <clears throat> what they don't know is I accepted that as a challenge. I, I believe them that this is a complicated transmission. And, I, and what they're charging for a rebuild is not outlandish. It really isn't. Trust me, guys, I just spent, we just spent $1,400 on tools to rebuild this transmission. And that's not including the press that you're gonna need. You're gonna need all this different stuff. And these tools may only be used one time. So they're rebuild. What they're charging to refurbish your transmission is fantastic and their shipping is, they're, they're not making a dollar off from getting the transmission uh, from you and back. They're, they're, they're really decent about that. All right, so. You're going to see the rebuild of these transmissions coming up in videos. There's going to be a bunch of them. Uh, and we're going to get this sound narrowed away. Now, I do want to say one thing. We're not tearing this Jeep apart because the Jeep is totally drivable now. He can drive this anywhere in North Carolina right now. He can trail it. I, I wouldn't worry about it because you can tell it's a bearing sound. And it's more pronounced at highway speeds. But are we taking a trip to Alabama or Michigan or Tennessee with it right now? No, it's we already did that. Um, a guy trailing these this Jeep right here, they they'd run that thing for 10, 10 years and not think twice about it. Uh, you know, because it you don't hear it down at lower speeds. It's all it's all at higher speeds. Okay, so that's where we're going with it. So. Um, but as high gear did tell me i think i'm saying that yeah high gear because fifth gear is out of texas high gear is out of memphis tennessee he told me that we were spot on by changing that tra uh chain in that transfer case because when he like i said when he found out <clears throat> that we had the cases split he, he like interrupted me he's like did you change that chain and i'm like yes and he's like Phew. he's like yeah, he said, even though how low miles your vehicle is, he said, they're notorious. The 241s are notorious for stretching that chain and growling and making a whole bunch of rackets. So I guess I feel a little bit vindicated for doing all that, but I wish um, we just want it fixed. And we're going to get it. We're going to get it. We'll just keep plugging away at it. And uh, we're going to get this thing figured out. So hopefully hopefully you guys um can pick up on this to where you're following us along so if you do have a manual and a uh transfer case that you're somewhat learning what what's inside of them what could be causing growls and whatnot and i'm probably going to do a separate video from that just from my own learning on what are possible causes to uh to cause this so okay see ya